entire industry that operates up and down the California coast is in jeopardy. Tonight we have a special look at the problem and a potential solution. Earlier I met Kenny Choi at the wharf to talk about something that could change the crabbing industry. So I'm with none other than Kenny Choi at Fisherman's Wharf. So we know that crab season was cut short again. Yeah, so this season was cut short and for the last several years the season has started later and ended earlier and so that's a problem for these crab fishermen who rely on this Dungeness crab to make a living. But there is some technology that's being tested out there that could address this problem. See the transmit light start. It's transmitting. Oceanographer Bart Chadwick is testing a device that could revive the struggling crab industry. GPS and acoustic technology trigger the release of buoys and rope sitting at the bottom of the ocean in crab pots. It could give fishermen a needed lift and prevent entangled whales. These units are now being used in multiple fisheries, uh, both testing and in, in actual fishing. They should be coming up. They spot the orange buoys that float to the surface. Oh, there it is. Anybody get it? And haul in the lines quickly. This method of operation eliminates tens of thousands of feet of vertical lines sitting in the ocean for days that can entangle whales. Rope only comes to the surface when boats return and retrieve their loot. It's working perfectly. <laughs> Chadwick's company builds the component called the AR4RT. The way it works is um, it's typically mounted vertically like this in the trap. Crab pots are strung together with a lead trap holding the rope on top. For the first time, a testing permit allows this fleet to dump traps and harvest crab in the spring, even as humpback whales migrate north to their summer feeding grounds off the California coast. Vertical lines won't be an issue. This release here, when it's activated, it spins like that and releases the line. And when the cam rotates, it slackens this line which allows everything to emerge from the trap. Kim Suwicki is an independent researcher evaluating the safety and reliability of the technology. We knew the gear was going to come up. We've been working with it for, well, I've been working with it for almost five years now. Without the pop-up gear, they are opening the fishery later in the calendar year and then closing it earlier. Catherine Kilduff and the Center for Biological Diversity see this as a solution only if it's also required in the fall when whales haven't migrated back south yet. There's a lot of pots that are being fished, um, but it can also be a really important time for the whales, especially with climate change. They're not leaving, the weather's not getting as cool as quickly in the fall. But the fishermen need full harvest to begin as demand spikes before Thanksgiving. The extra time setting up pop-ups during peak season would severely limit the catch. A whole time for guys that do this, not real receptive to change. They, you know, they think it's not possible. Fisherman Brand Little believes added pop-up regulation isn't a viable option for the fall, but that it would extend the commercial season into the spring and give an economic boost. When you start thinking outside the box and view it as not a new way to do things, but a supplemental way to get back some things that no longer are there for you, it doesn't make any sense not to do it. For now, this new approach will bridge what has been a widening gap between marine life advocates and fishermen, still trying to find a solution for all. I guess my question is, how scalable is this? How likely is it this technology could be used in many places? So these crab fishermen, their concern is that they're not going to be able to reset their traps as quickly as they do now. They've been doing this for generations, and so they're very fast. With this new technology, it's going to take a lot longer. Bottom line, they're not going to be making as much money. And I wonder if it's a coincidence because you do a lot of stories out on the water for us, and I know it has a lot to do with some of your hobbies and your love for the ocean. So I love the, you know you know that I love surfing. I love the ocean. If it's a water story, I'm out there. A couple of years ago, I did a story about riptides out at Ocean Beach. I actually got into my wetsuit <laughs> and went swimming with some San Francisco firemen out there who are doing some uh, drills out there. But this story, it, it resonates for a lot of people. In the Bay Area, there are crab fishermen who have been dealing with this issue for years, even decades. And so this is a real uh, example of, of a, a solution that's out there that could help this industry. And we're also seeing a lot more entanglements with humpback whales and marine life in these vertical lines over the years, according to state officials. So it's a real problem. All right, fascinating. Kenny Choi, thank you so much.